Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel for another painting tutorial. Today I'm going to show you on this 18 by 24 black pre-painted canvas how to paint this landscape. And I'm going to be using a number 50 filbert brush to start. I'll have a full list below this video in the description box as well, but I'll just go over the colors here quickly before we get started. I've got a warm yellow, a cool lemon yellow, titanium white, green turquoise, thalo blue, magenta, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. So what I want to do is just start by creating some light in the background and I'm going to be taking a combination of white and both of the yellows. I'm just going to scoop them both up like this with the white and I'm just going to start by going in the center of the canvas. I'll add a little bit more. Okay, the next color I'm going to add is a little bit of magenta. Without washing my brush off, I'll take a little bit of this and I'm going to start going around where I left off with the yellows and the white. Okay, now I'm going to be a little bit more generous with the magenta in the corners. Okay, the next brush I'm going to be using is a number 30 filbert. And I'm going to just take the turquoise and I'm going to start adding it part way down the center, side to side, clean brush. I'm going to take my phthalo blue and I'm going to start adding it part way over the turquoise about halfway down, lightly layer over, go back and forth. And the next brush I'm going to be using is my number 14 filbert brush. I'm going to take some yellow and some white. You want to have more white than yellow. And you just want to have it on the end of your brush and I've chose this, chosen this brush because it has the scoop shape on the end, that half circle shape that I need for this next step. So it just makes it a lot easier. So what I want to do is have some little clouds and create a little bit more dimension in this painting and um, adding some little scoops like this can really make a landscape and a sky much more dramatic. So what I want to do is just add it partially over the existing first layer of yellows and white and then ease into a bit of that magenta
So mix up a little bit more here. So in order for it to show up better over the light yellow, we're gonna take extra white and just very lightly go over. And then it really shows up a lot better. I'm just going to slightly brush over the horizon line here, add a little bit of that turquoise in with the yellow and white, bring it over partially over the sky horizon line, and rinse my brush out. And while my brush is still a little bit wet, I'm going to blend this out and soften. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is come in and add some more um, clouds in the sky, but I'm going to change the color up. I'm going to take white, blue, and magenta, so we'll make purple. Okay, so first we'll add this and I'm going to start here and because this is the outer edges uh, we want it to draw us in so larger here and smaller here so those scoops we did here towards uh, the background and the distance are smaller so we want to create bigger scoops Gently get them smaller and let the very little amount of paint you have left in your brush sort of blend in with this area here. And to make it even lighter, we'll add more white and make a really soft, powdery blue violet color. And we're going to add it right in here. You're just going to give a little highlight and soften some of these. It's really easy to create these dreamy, pretty skies with just a few colors. Filbert brush like this really helps, though you can do this with other brushes if you don't have this. And if you're not sure, just leave a comment below or question if you guys have any. Now I want to tie this pretty violet blue color in down here, so I'm going to take a little bit of that, mix up a little bit more here. And I'm just going to add a little hint of it. Around the sides here, just lightly overlapping. I'm going to go over here and be a little bit more bold. I'm going to take a lot more of my phthalo blue full strength and 
I just want to add some right in here to create a little bit more depth. I like the pastels that we've got going on, but I don't want to have the entire uh, painting pastel. Now I'm going to scoop up the remaining turquoise. I'm going to add that partially over the blue. And I'm going to take my number 30 filbert brush. I'm going to add burnt umber and a little bit of burnt sienna first. No water. And I'm just going to come along the bottom here. Just along the bottom like this. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do with my number 14 filter brush is take both those colors again, burnt umber, burnt sienna. And I want to add a tree right in here. So I'm going to go from the top push and pull it's going to be a little thicker as it goes down of course so let's make it wider let's bring it out towards the left and then have it curve over and then over here And then we could have interesting branch coming down like this, up and over. Another one coming out here. And let's add one right about here. Kind of dips down and goes up and off the canvas on the top. Now what I want to do is create a little bit more depth, contrast, and shadows. Uh, and I'm going to take some phthalo blue, magenta, and green. So a little bit more of the blue there. Mix that up. And I'm going to add shadow down this side. So just come in. From the left, pull and scoop over, swirl over. And we can add some more here as well. Now the next brush I'm going to take to add a little bit of um, pattern on the bark, but not a lot. I don't want the pattern on the bark to compete too much with the beautiful cloud pattern we've got. And I want this to be a little darker anyways, but I want to just make it really subtle. And I'm going to show you a neat trick right now 
by using a fan brush and see how the fan brush is kind of split into sections. That's what's going to really help you create all those instant lines and an instant pattern um, for bark on a tree. It's a really cool uh, way to do it. So don't wiggle your brush, just kind of tap it in. If you wiggle too much, you'll make all those bristles spread out again. And you'll just be left with like one solid line. So you want to dip into a little bit of white and a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt umber if you've got it in there. I've got a little bit of each here. And I'm going to decide where we want to have our highlights or just like subtle, subtle highlights. So I'm going to come down on the edge. And then you can kind of loop like this. And then bring it down, follow the curve of the tree. And then if you want to add some more little scoops, just do them a little tighter and closer together. Push. Now this is going to dry darker than how it looks right now. And that's perfect because we don't want it to be too bright. Just very subtle. Maybe we can just catch the inside of that one. <clears throat> Now the next thing I want to do is come in and add um, some foliage around the side down here on the bottom um, kind of nestling this tree in a little bit more and then I was thinking of maybe having a lady um, kind of sitting here with her legs up and maybe her dress hanging over we'll see I am painting this intuitively which I do quite a bit um, sometimes I have a little idea of what uh, in mind of what I want to do, but <laughs> it always veers off. Um, and I always trust my imagination and go with my ideas. It's always more fun that way. Um, and I've got this uh, pretty large to one inch dry mop brush. What I'm going to be doing is um, no water at all, just loading my brush with a little bit of the greens. And I'm going to start tapping uh, over slightly over top of this brown area here for some soft foliage in the foreground. So I'm just going to find a clean spot here. I don't want a bunch of globs, blobs of paint. I want to load the brush evenly. So just by tapping lightly around like this, we keep that nice, soft, round, fluffy shape that we want. So I'm just going to come slightly over top here. And I'm going to come in here and add a little bit as well. I'm going to mix a little bit of that burnt sienna with it. This will warm this green up a little bit more, makes it a little bit more earthy. And I'm just going to come right along here and just tap. Gently pull and sweep. A 
a little bit back here, just a little hint of it. And a little around the top as well. So now I'm going to take, go back over to my round brush, mop brush, and tap into my light olive green. Okay, and I'm going to start adding some highlights down here. But again, we'll dry a little bit darker. Because we don't want them too, too bright. Add a little bit there and there. And just pull and sweep off the top. And I'm just going around in little circles here just to soften some of this, soften the edges a little bit. I'm going to rinse my brush out. Then I'm going to go back over to my number 20 flat. There's a little bit of water left in my brush. And I'm just going to take that green with a little bit of that burnt sienna. You can take both greens, a little bit of all the colors if you want, just to make a darker color. And we'll just kind of tap in here for some vines hanging. I'm going to take a little bit more of my light olive green. And just brush side to side. Take a little bit of white, yellow, and the olive green. You don't want too, too much paint on your brush. You want to just mix it up and then lightly kind of just dust over tap over just i'm just using the corner of my brush like this with yellow white and green just the corner like this Just for a few little leaves and some subtle glowing highlights. Okay, now I think we can start coming in with our figure. We're going to have a, a lady here with her, her legs here and maybe her dress uh, hanging over. I'm going to be using a really small filbert brush. This is a size zero. And I'm going to just take a little bit of my green, bluey purple, burnt sienna. And 
and we'll have her head right about here. Hair coming down. Shoulder. So just like a half circle like this, or you can make a full circle. We're going to have hair covering her face though. So say that's her chin right there, jaw, hair coming down, shoulder here, her back, we could have her arm out like this. Maybe her other arm here. Maybe she's reading a book. I don't know. We'll just make it up as we go along. I might change a few things too. We'll have her feet here. Her legs and her bottom. Here. I'm going to get rid of the book. I don't like that. <laughs> Part of intuitive painting. i going to try those ideas out. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. You don't know until you try. Okay, her knee, calves and her feet. Now we're going to have a dress on her draping over as well. I thought that would look really pretty and romantic. For her dress, I'm going to be using a small flat brush, a little bit of water, and some white. A little bit of that blue violet that we made. You want to have it really transparent and you don't want to have a lot on your brush either so mix the color up and then just have a little bit to work with so i'm going to come loop down here for her arm and then have her dress hanging over it like you would, you know, like a waterfall. So just pull a drop because it is cascading over, similar to a waterfall, and then you want to have different lines for the folds.
and just make some of these thicker. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, white, and burnt sienna. For the side of her face, her neck and chest area. And then have her arm. And hand coming down here. Her foot. I'm going to add a shadow on her hair here, bring this over under her chin, through her nose here, Add a little bit to her hair. We're just adding a few little beads or flowers in her hair. And taking some more white. Just add a little bit more highlights here. My number three round brush, a little bit of that magenta and some white. We add a few in her hair as well. A little bit of pink here and there, That'd be kind of pretty. I'm just going to push and tap for some really loose impressionistic flowers. Tap, tap, tap for some petals. And a little bit more 
plate. And I'm going to take a little bit of yellow in with that magenta. Pretty dry brush. Just add a little bit to her face. And then add a little bit to the tops of these flowers. And then a few little dots and dabs. Blue, green, light olive green. And I'm just gonna push and wiggle. Almost like heart-shaped flowers. Add a little bit of white. Don't be afraid to overlap. You need to overlap for them to look 3D. And then I'll just dab in a few smaller ones here and there. Okay, I'm going to take another mop brush and I'm going to add some more light olive green. A little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. Add a little bit of white to soften. I'm going to create a little path going over here and then maybe a little castle, but nothing too detailed, just keeping it very uh, soft and just an idea that we've got a little something going on over there. So I'm going to take a little bit of white, burnt sienna, blue and green. with my little flat brush here and I'll just have it coming in from the right. See how I'm just sliding my brush? I'm going to bring it out here and then back over there. So I'll make it a little bit more visible with more white this time. Wider here as it gets closer to us and then narrower, farther away. And then I'll just pull up. Wow, just a little castle there. 
So again, all you want to do is have a little bit of whatever color you want for your castle. I'm just doing white. Pull up. Then I'm going to go down and up to a point. You can use any brush for the tops of your castle. Just add a few little points. Now I've got a hint of the path color in my brush, right? A little bit of that burnt sienna and blue and green. So if you want to have a little bit more, I want to keep it really soft and kind of dreamy looking like, almost like, is there a castle there? Making kind of a little bit of mystery in the painting. Then just coming along the side with a little bit more paint, burnt umber, burnt sienna, blue and green. A little, little bit of depth. a little bit of that magenta with my white. And I'm going to add this here because this will be a little bit more complementary with the greens. Maybe it'll show up a little bit better. Take a little bit more white now. And then a little wiggle for a flag, a little line, and then with the corner of your brush, wiggle a little line, barely any pressure. Make them as bright as you want and for more contrast and detail just use a darker color and go in between if you want A little bit more of the burnt sienna with the magenta. And now I'm going to take my long rigger brush. This is a number two. I'm going to get my brush wet and I'm going to take some green and burnt umber, water, Add a little bit more depth in here. That'll make that look even farther away. Just adding a few little lines and sort of half circles.
gonna add a few more branches. Let's add one coming down here, a little bit thicker, a few more um, leaves and vines hanging down. I'm going to use my little fan brush for this. So I'm going to take both of my greens, a little bit of burnt umber. And I'm going to tap to start. I have a little bit coming over the edge here of this branch. Just pull and drop. bit here as well. So you just really want a combination of the tapping or a little bit of texture for some leaves as well as a little bit of gently pulling like that. Sometimes it helps to have a little bit of water in your brush too, if you're having a little bit of trouble getting that nice sweep that you want. So I'm going to come over here now and add one hanging down. Right down this tree here again here where it kind of loops. Need a little bit more of the burnt umber to make it show up. And a little bit of the light olive green. A light little pull and sweep. And I'm going to bring her dress down a little bit lower. 
over to my flat brush, a little bit of white and a little bit of blue. sort of kind of roughly and folding over down here on the on the grass I'm going to add some magenta flowers in here just to kind of tie this corner here together I'm going to use another dry mop brush. Okay, and I'm just going to go right in this area here. A little bit of white. And tap over. A little bit there. I'm going to add a little bit in this area, going over those little flowers we had earlier, just slightly. A little bit of white again. Now I'm going to take a little bit of blue mix that with the white and the magenta and tap a little bit of that in. Isn't that pretty? Like a purple. I have a purple here. just a little bit of white okay I'm going to call this painting all done this was really really fun um, thanks for sticking around if you watched the entire video I know this is a long one um, this is how I work intuitively. So I, I like to um, film it and kind of give you guys an idea of how you could do this yourselves, how you can trust your imagination, sometimes wipe off and go over something that didn't turn out. But the point is you really just have to give it a try because you never know what you can create. And I really love this piece. So I think I'm going to take this out and go hang it in my bedroom um, and just pretend I'm <clears throat> in a tree like this looking out at my little castle over the hill. Thanks, everyone. I want to wish you all the best in your art journey. Thanks so much for being part of mine, and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!